Hi friends, perhaps you're on semaglutide, also known as Ozempic or Wagovi, and you've wondered about whether it has side effects, and perhaps you've heard of this concern about whether it causes visual changes, specifically blindness. If so, hang out with me today and let's get to the bottom of this, as you might be surprised by what we learn together. First of all, just a reminder, this is not individualized medical advice. This is just educational and entertainment information for you. This is the study that was published in JAMA Ophthalmology in July of 2024. And what it describes is the risk of a ophthalmological or visual complication of being on semaglutide, also known as Wagovi or Ozempic. Now, the specific condition they studied was called non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. And that's a very complicated name that I will break down for you in a second. When people think about visual loss, they often think about something going on in the front of their eye or around their eye like this. But in fact, what's actually happening is that there's a part of the back of the eye called the optic nerve. And here you can see where the arrow is pointing. This is the optic nerve connecting to the eyeball from the brain. And it appears that we see from our eyes, but we actually see with our brain. And the connection between the brain and the eyeball is what is under discussion here, because you can see that there is an actual artery and vein that supplies blood to the retina and the eyeball that goes through the optic nerve area. And what's of concern here is that connection, that blood flow being interrupted in some way and blocking the nerve signals that normally go from the eye to the brain. So let's take a look at this study a little bit more in depth by looking specifically at what is the complication that has been described here. They use an acronym called NAON, N-A-I-O-N, for this condition. But what it is, it's a damage to the optic nerve that you just saw, and it's caused by a disruption of the blood flow to the front part of the optic nerve. And it's experienced by the person as a sudden, painless loss of vision, and it's typically only in one eye. There's experienced something like a shadow or a dark spot in the field of vision, and often this is unfortunately permanent, but some people may experience some partial improvement. Typically, we don't really have any treatments for this at this time, unfortunately. In terms of the question of the study, the objective of the study was really to see, is there a risk using semaglutide, also known as Wagovi or Zempic, and this condition called NAON? So what they specifically looked at was whether there is an association between taking this medication and an increased risk of this condition in specific patient populations. These are people with type 2 diabetes or who have obesity or overweight BMIs. So it wasn't just looking at the whole population of patients in a hospital or something like that. It was a very specialized population, people who are actually going to be likely to be prescribed semaglutide. More specifically, what we can see in the study design here is that, first of all, it was a retrospective study, which means that it was not something where they followed people for a long time and they did a randomized controlled trial in a pure study to observe causal inference. And it was a matched cohort study, which means that they matched patients that were taking semaglutide with other patients who were very similar to them, but were taking a different medication. So you have these cases and you have these controls, which is not as good of a type of study for inferring causality or that X cause Y. However, it's worth something. The data that they found is from a specific neuro-ophthalmology clinic at the Massachusetts Eye and Ear in Boston. So these are specialized clinicians who are doing these evaluations. So we have high trust in the outcomes of their observations. The people who were in the study were about 17,000 patients who did not already have a history of NAON. However, the investigators were looking to compare people who are prescribed semaglutide, which is called a GLP-1 receptor agonist or a GLP medication with people with these same conditions, obesity or diabetes type 2, but who just happen to not be on a GLP medication, like they might have been on some other medication for metabolic syndrome or obesity. And they wanted to compare and see, was there a difference in the rates of this ophthalmological condition that leads to blindness? What they controlled for were all these other things, like age, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes or not having type 2 diabetes, sleep apnea, obesity, high lipids, coronary artery disease, because why? You have to control for these things because these things also cause those eye problems. So if you don't control for these other things, you might just assume that any difference was real, but it might be just an artifact of these other things. We're going to come back to this issue later.
So they did control for a bunch of stuff. Now, the results were that the greatest risk of Nayan was within the first year of starting semaglutide. That's interesting because if you observe something happening non-randomly, like right after you prescribe it, then that gives you more confidence that it's actually caused by that thing. So we'll come back to that as well. So let's take a look at the type 2 diabetes patients. What they found is that there were a total of 17 events of Nayan in the people taking semaglutide versus 6 in the people not taking it. Now, one thing to notice here is that this Nayan is happening to people even who are not taking semaglutide. It's happening at baseline because of these other factors. The cumulative incidence was 8.9% versus 1.8%. That's a hazard ratio or a risk ratio of about 4.28, which means there's a 328% relative risk increase in having Nayan. Now, that's a lot. But as you can see, the overall numbers are fairly low, 17 out of many thousands. Now, in the group of people who are obese or overweight, you see something very similar. About 20 people had this Nayan who were on semaglutide versus three who were on other medications. And the cumulative incidence was 6.7% versus 0.8%, which is a 7.64 hazard ratio or a 664% increase in risk. So those are relative risks rather than absolute risks, remember. So you do see a signal of something being more likely to happen in terms of Nayon in people who are taking semaglutide. That's fairly clear in this study. So let's look at this data in another way. Here are the graphs. So here you can see what's called a Kaplan-Meier curve, which is just another way of representing how likely something is to happen over time. You can see over time from zero to 36 months or three years. And you can see the semaglutide group is in orange and the people taking some other medicine are in black. And what we see is that you have a higher risk of this outcome happening if you're in the semaglutide group. The graph goes down for the orange, but it stays basically stable for the black. Same thing here for the patients who are obese or overweight, you see a difference in the outcomes here. So if this is a little complicated, don't worry about it. It's just important to know if there's some basic signal here, some basic effect. Now, in terms of the conclusions, there's possible confounding in this effect. So should you really believe this effect? That's the key question here. People who get semaglutide may have more advanced diabetes or vascular disease compared to people who got these other medications. The study did control for all these factors like age and all these conditions that I mentioned earlier. However, it did not control for the degree of severity of those conditions. And if you're a clinician and you're going to prescribe semaglutide versus giving somebody metformin or some other medication, you're more likely to give that medication to people who are more severe. So this effect could be explained by the fact that it's a side effect of the differences in the populations pre-existing this study's outcomes, meaning that the reason that we see that signal in the semaglutide group is just because those patients are a little bit sicker at baseline. It may be not due to the semaglutide itself. That's one possible explanation. The second thing to remember is even if this risk does exist, the absolute risk does remain low overall. So if you look up the two groups and you combine the total number of events, there's 37 total NAON events out of 16 or 17,000. So overall, it's still very unlikely to happen in an absolute sense. Also, it's important to remember that, as I mentioned before, even at baseline, a lot of people are having neon who are not even on semaglutide. So there's something about metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease that just predisposes people to this happening in these populations. And the other thing, as I mentioned, is this is not definitive evidence because we need an actual randomized controlled trial to infer causality. We need placebo-controlled randomized controlled trials. This was not that. This was a study with Good evidence, but not the best type of evidence. The other thing to keep in mind is that this study did not include an analysis of whether the risk goes down when you stop the medication. And it did not include an analysis of whether the risk goes up as you have a higher dose of the same medications. Because those two things would allow us to infer causation more readily for this topic. So there are some limitations to the study. However, overall, this study does raise reasons for higher concern in this population. Again, the greatest risk of having Nayon was in the first year after starting semaglutide. So that, I think, personally, is the most compelling part of the study. It seems like the time course suggests that starting the medicine really does do something to the risk of Nayon. Of course, if you're on a medication like this, it's important to have careful monitoring when you're on semaglutide for these outcomes. And it's important to have 
informed consent before you go on one of these medications. Specifically, if you have a situation where somebody has known retinal disease, for example, if they had a diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy or some other eye condition, that person would want to be more careful about their risks of starting semaglutide and have an important discussion with their clinician. Overall, thanks so much. If you're interested in seeing more information like this, subscribe and like this so I know to make more stuff like this. And if you're interested in some ways to reduce your risks for these types of conditions, check out my description below. Take care. Thank you.